All right, guys, it's a bit of a uh, wet day, cold day, windy day here in the matter. <coughs> Picked up the cold or a flu yesterday as well. Uh, we went off to IKEA. As you can see, the conservatory is coming together. Um, guys, are back Monday and Tuesday. We have most of this done. And I can sort the electrics and the render out afterwards. Um, <coughs> but I've sort of want to bring up the importance of milestones and where you actually sit. See, this is a big milestone for me because this is my working area. Because um, at the moment I'm sitting in the laundry, I don't really use upstairs. Um, I haven't used my laptop most of the time because it's, it's chaotic. There's too much stuff in there, There's too much going on, and like now it's been raining, so all the laundry's in where I work, which means I don't work. Um, so this is quite a important bit for 2023 because this is where things start to move in a different direction. This is the last piece on the house, except for the solar panels, sorting out the render and there's something else, I can't remember what it is. Um, but it's nearly there. <clears throat> then obviously we've got the mortgage to pay off. The interest rate's gone up I think to 52 um, so you sort of go, what What do I pay the mortgage or do I start building up my savings and working towards a long-term goal on the savings? Um, and this is where I sort of want to talk about milestones because it's important to recognise that I know a lot of you guys put a lot of effort in, in what you're doing. But you need to understand you're always going to be your worst critic. The average person in the UK has got debt of over 25 grand. Um, I assume a lot of you guys haven't. Myself, my only debt is the mortgage. And we've managed to pay, I think it's 20, 25,000 off that last year. And I'm going to nibble away at that this year. The other side of that being is today looking at ISAs. Now, the initial ISA is going to be about, one, I think it's 1.84% interest, which is below what the inflation rate is. But what you've got to bear in mind is, currently, I sit money in bank accounts and it doesn't actually do anything because it's been there for construction work, it's been there for emergencies, and now I'm starting to go, okay, we've got the mortgage, we know how much mortgage is every month. Let's put away as much as I spend on other stuff. So for example, I can't buy a new car now unless I put the same money into the bank, into the, the ISA. So it's quite a bit of discipline and quite strict, but the whole basis is, for example, last month I had some uh, Christmas party stuff, so I ended up buying a couple of suits. So that, that way a load of cash. Well, going forward, if I want to spend a thousand pounds on suits, I've got to put a thousand into the investments first. Um, and the whole point is, this is how you get moving on your pension fund. Now, it doesn't always mean it's going to have to be straight out my wages or anything like that. It can actually be like, okay, I need a thousand pounds. Maybe I'll work on people per hour at the weekends and uh, generate extra income. Some of that's not really worth it these days because the amount of tax I pay. Um, but at the same time, um, April's down and somebody's not earning, so uh, in theory, there's a tax opportunity there. But you've got to understand that you're not doing bad. You know, if you own your own home, you're in a better position than many. If you've got less than 25 grand in debt, you're less than many. If you're last more than one paycheck, um, then you're in a much better position than most. Because let's face it, I noticed that years ago when you see people there, you know, brand new Range Rover, latest Air Jordans, all you know, it's all bling it up, it's all false front. Um, it's normally the guy with a little bloody mini metro or something, um, a little plumber bloke, I remember. Now, was he financially better off? Probably, but he never looked like he had any money and he did have five kids, so there was a uh, cash, cash flow. Um, problem there but at the same time 
he wasn't trying to impress anybody he wasn't trying to oversell himself he was just getting on with things and it wasn't extravagant society dictates that you should be better than everybody else it's false it's false wealthy people don't work that way and if they do it's because a they're probably been overly, overly competitive with others previously and then they probably still got insecurities around people doing better than them but the reality is set up your own goals where you want to be what you want to achieve because um, some of them are easier than others you know like if somebody's saying well what career do I want a lot of people still go I don't know um, now I'll shut that dog up um, but the reality is like myself I've been in engineering done surveying uh, worked as a quantity surveyor um, currently looking at um, software for the same industry because I can see a gap in it but the point is you, you think out the box don't don't assume once you pick a ticket the box and go I'm gonna be a carpenter that's the only thing you do the fact is I was a carpenter I was an electronics engineer I've worked on heating and ventilation systems I've gone where the money is and I've chopped and changed over the years and every time I've done it I've increased what I own so the point is don't overthink that one unless it's just um, even at McDonald's McDonald's is for um, maybe one of the worst sort of sought after jobs but it's a business where you can actually work from the ground up to regional manager national manager you name it because they, they recruit within. So that's an important thing. They, they have a decent business model. Not that I'm a big fan of McDonald's as a business with its food, but they, their business model for its staff is good. Because that's where you get your attention. The fact is you can promote, and if you're promoting, you keep people. A lot of companies don't do that. That's why they keep losing and then recruiting. But a lot of it is people just need a path of improvement. It's not even in promotion. It's um, development, you know, because <coughs> they may want to learn something else that may not even be work related, but they can see there's some funding in there, they might go for it, but they might keep you somebody an extra three years that you're likely to lose this, some of you didn't. Um, but my whole point of this, getting back on track, is financially you're probably better off than most people. Financially, um, the opportunities are there you know let's face it we're not um, sitting, well we'll take, take India Pakistan Philippines or Syria we're not in a war torn country and we're not in a um, country with um, low pay but I always find low pay a bit of an odd one because I found when I lived in the Philippines you can live ridiculously cheap in comparison to the UK in the UK, nearly, nearly everybody's wages go on living costs. It's an extremely expensive place to live. With very little in there, very little um, benefit. So you've got to look at where you want to be, what you want to do. For me, once this goes up, I've got my office, which means I can start thinking outside the box again. Um, because it's important for me that my day job's my day job the, the, to get where I want to be comes from other stuff and at the moment I haven't got that space but it's got to be there you know, just sitting down here at night relaxing, thinking looking out the window, out the window going right, where do we go from here like I said, today it's been right you spend a lot of money on gadgets like, you know, cause like I said, when this, this was just grinding because it just stopped my uh, sort of future planning sort of stopped because I need the space I can't do anything without it <laughs> um, and now it's got to that point where it's coming together now I can start moving forward again so like I said if I want, uh, want a new set of uh, headphones for 400 quid I've got to put 400 in the, uh, the investment fund at the same time some of you may be asking why am I putting an ISA well, for a start, the 1.84 
it's nothing in the sense of um, well, you go back what a year or so. I think it was 0.25. So, but the, but the point being, <coughs> inflation's gone up faster than that is. But it's a reserve fund because you might go, well, your mortgage is over five percent. Yeah, but I'm going to be paying that as well. I'm, I'm going, that's a separate, separate cost because basically when my mortgage interest rate doubled, it's back where I started uh, on the monthly payments. Although I paid 25 grand off, I'm flipping back where I was last year. Um, but I don't see that as a negative, you see, because that's 25 grand off. And if I do that for the next two, three years, there will be no mortgage. Um, but the whole point of the ISA piece is got to get to five grand so I can move it up to the next one. The next one, I think, is 3.5% or 3.8% interest. And then that just sits in there. It's already parked, put it to a side and let it build up. Because I need to get my bank fan funds back up to about 25,000. Um, I can only keep about 20, 25,000 on hand for emergencies. And you're probably thinking that's a hell of a lot of money, but it's not. It's just, you've got to change your mindset on how you spend stuff. So for example, for the last, since COVID, I've eaten out a lot. Um, because to be fair, in a shared house, I'm stuck in the UK, it's quite a depressing place. Um, you don't really want to cook in there, you want to go out, you want to do what, do what you can to not be locked into one place. So, that, let's just say that was, if I drop that down where I'm cooking more, I've changed the diet a bit as well, I'm eating a lot more um, dried cereal type stuff, but it's it's more like nuts and just just a mix of dried food with uh, Greek yogurt. Um, it's more healthy, but at the same time, the difference is probably about four hundred pounds a month on what I'd be spending on eating now. So the point being is, <coughs> when I'm going, I'm going to put this money in. And put this in. I already know where it's coming from. It's not extra money at the minute. It's money I already have. It's money I'm already earning. But if I want this to be my full-time gig, I've got to get get more cash through quicker because I need to buy another property. I don't know some of you guys go, oh, buying property is a bad thing. Buy it here, you can rent it out straight away. Literally straight away. Um, the Ukraine war has brought a lot of people to the area. We've, we've literally rented out any property we've got our hands on. And even ones where somebody moves. Yeah, we've got two friends going, uh, they're going back further north. Um, their property is our old flat on the top. So the guys at the bottom are moving up there and somebody else will move from another block into there. The properties are already full before we've even entered them. The market's there. Now, the initial pain is getting that mortgage down, getting it started, but then once it's running, someone else is picking up the tab. And like I said, for the long term, I need those, you know, 400, 500 a month coming in, um, that's just paying the mortgages off. Then every now and again, I'll just hit the mortgage with a three, four grand, just get it, knock it down a bit, so that the money coming in starts building up a reserve at the same time as well for new aircon, plumbing or whatever. But I know a lot of people going about flipping, you know, when you sell your property. Well, we're here for the long term. All of this is about being able to live here. Um, <coughs> so for me, this being finished cuts my expenditure down. Um, this wiped out a lot of my savings. Um, I've got a lot of veneration work done. I've got a lot of problems because we've had the electric box rewired recently um, but we're now at that stage where roofs on windows open office in it's back to functionality and the costs drop off so then I start the money I was spending here starts going into the saving funds um, it's all good but the reason I brought it up today is you guys need to realise you're in a better position than most people out there I think the average 
average wage in the, the world is $9,200. So if you're earning more than that, you're doing better than most. Um, if you own your own home, you're doing better than most. If your debt's under 25 grand, you're doing better than most in the UK. If you can have enough money to live in um, the UK, if you lost your job for three months, you're doing better than most. Now, don't get me wrong, it sounds a bit bleak, some of this stuff, but the reality is, I'm saying, you're doing better than most. Don't punish yourself. Realise that the incentive here is actually being able to say, yeah, I'm in the top, I don't know, let's call it 10%, you know, because like, let's face it, it sort of has this big gap between, you know, um, the different levels in society, and it's not even a true metric anymore. Um, but society dictates they will always look at the person who's up here not all the ones that are around it all the people that actually get in there it's all about I'm the best of the best all the false media nonsense yet in reality one person on that pedestal like you do it Tour de France for example so you get somebody win the, the race it's all over the media how many people are in that race? And it's not an easy race. They're all fantastic athletes, they all put the same effort in, they all train, they all put the, you know. It, I'm sure many of them would actually just, just glad to be part of something. I know when I used to do sports events when I was younger, it wasn't about winning the tournament. It's actually been part of the tournament. Now, don't get me wrong, I'm not all wishy-washy, because, you know, I get it, you know, winning, <laughs> winning is the best, but at the same time, um, for an individual, they should also recognise that you've made it that far, but the media only focus on the winner, and that's right, wrong, I don't know, my, my, my view is, it's been nice if I actually did, oh, my, I'm going to actually say a documentary, um, actually followed some of the smaller smaller teams or something just see how they get through a year you know because the point is they all put the same, the same effort in still trying to get sponsors still trying to make it all the way through um, and they they probably know well if they don't know they're not going to win then uh, they're deluged <laughs> yeah it's you know it's one of those things where the passion in it and for me this is the passion the passion is having this set up here this is you know this is my long-term objective this is for the family this is for um, the stability of our our life in Spain don't get me wrong I could work until retirement but to hell with that <laughs> let's, let's get the money back and let's do some stuff from here let me actually finish writing some of the books I've started. Let's have a let's have a thinking out of the box session in a nice area where all you can hear is the waves and the wind. And just sit there and go, right, I need to increase my revenue, I need to do something. And just being able to sit here and think is a big thing. So I do find in the UK there's too many irritants um, by the shared house. It's all somebody whinging about something there. Bizarrely, I, I'm generally not involved in any of it. I keep out of my way. I can't be bothered with it. Um, I mean, I know some of the guys are okay, but there's the odd one. Uh, yeah, the odd one. Just, just always whinging about something. And you're like, oh my God, a, if this is all you've got to moan about, you're doing pretty good. Um, but we're getting there. And if you haven't started your journey, I hope this actually helps. So the whole point is, I started today. Now the good point you've got here is I've wiped out most of my finances, so I'm back on the journey from scratch as well. So done it in the Philippines, done it in Spain now, and we're about to do it again, so we can actually wrap up and leave the rat race for good. So it's going to be an interesting few years. See, I didn't say in a week. I'm not expecting to do everything in a day. It's bloody hard work.
that's why I've, I never run people down for trying to achieve stuff because it's not easy the reality is a lot of times people want to pull you down a lot of people criticize and you may be the worst critic of yourself you may worry about people thinking oh look he failed better to try and fail than not try at all you may get it right once you get it wrong 200 times but like we were saying earlier about winners people remember the uh, the once because the other 200 times they'll forget you know I've, I've heard it before from some friends where some of our friends are very successful and they'll say oh yeah I used to be you know is it like they were best friends before it wasn't that when they were working night and day they didn't go out and ab over and above to help them out they were quite critical on it sometimes but once they made it they were like oh yeah that, they used to be my best mate all that type of stuff people eh alright guys have a great afternoon it's Sunday afternoon here we're going for a uh, Sunday roast with our neighbours Madalena and Pepe um, and I hope you can get to a point where you want, you have, you've got what you want in life but also recognise be content where you are it's like this this is like a big thing for me because I feel like all the pressure's off once that roof goes on the pressure's off because um, this was my main goal it's done got the house got the renovations looking at the weather drop and they get the hot top back out if things take a slow pace now not as fast because we've got the main things we've got our home roof over your head food on the table that's your keys after that everything's a bonus take it easy guys and uh, keep on plodding on if you haven't done it already you will do take care